Hello, today we're going to unload 1.3 terabytes of compressed data from Snowflake into our cloud storage, which happens to be AWS S3, and then we're going to load those data files back in. So let me just start the script because it'll take about five and a half minutes to unload from Snowflake into our cloud storage. And then I'll explain a little more about why we're doing this and what are the benefits of doing this. So as you can see, we are a uh, using a warehouse having to be called Play Warehouse for extra large. We're gonna we're gonna copy out uh, in, copy into a location which happens to be our cloud storage from this view called Source View, and the max file size is 250 megabytes, which is a uh, recommended best practice of 100 megabytes to 250 megabytes compressed files to parallel load either uh, leaving Snowflake or coming into Snowflake. Overwrite is true, though you could probably remove that here. And the file format is type is CSV. We also support JSON and Parquet to uh, export uh, to export from. And of course, viewed option you close by, uh, double quotes. So that will allow us to have uh, strings with uh, any, any type of delimiter in there as well, because it will be quoted. Okay, so let's walk through this script and a little bit about what we're doing and why, okay? So here we're gonna, uh, as that's running in the background, it'll take about five minutes. We're going to run how to run big data 1.3 terabytes compressed unloads and loads on Snowflake, and we're going to use the Transaction Processing Council Decision Support data set, which is uh, a little bit of explanation over here. This is uh, on the Snowflake blog. Essentially, this is 10 terabytes and 100 terabytes of the sample data instantly available to you. The benefit of this is you don't have to load that on Snowflake, it's already there. It's uh, hosted on cloud uh, Snowflake storage, so you don't have to pay to store that 10 terabytes or 100 terabytes. You're essentially getting a pointer into accessing that data and using uh, Snowflake's clustered keys uh, in, in the background on that. And so we're gonna be exporting from the store sales uh, database. And we also show you how to load from the, from the, the customer table right here as well, which is great for unit tests, okay? So uh, let me go through some of these tabs and then explain more. So this is all open source. It's gonna be at this big data unload and load script. It's also in the video description. Of course, the prerequisites are you need to connect to your Snowflake to your AWS S3 or connect to your Azure cloud uh, storage um, as well. And of course, Google Cloud is also supported. Just look at the documentation. And of course, what we're gonna do is load this data. We're gonna unload this into our S3 and uh, we will should start seeing files come in. You saw previously, those were the other files that were created, but these files are gonna start coming. As you can see, they're being written to right now, uh, 252 uh, Eastern data, data Savings Time. And of course, uh, copy into is, if you wanted to look at more documentation, this is what we're doing. Essentially, it's gonna copy into a location which is, uh, it's gonna copy into the S3. The copy into the location means essentially to unload. And of course, we're gonna do the reverse, which is probably the more common use case of loading data into Snowflake uh, from either your S3 cloud storage or, or your Azure. All right, so let's see how, how that loads come in. It's about three minutes. So I ran some logging earlier. As you can see, this is the stored sales table. It's 28 billion rows. So let me, let me show you that right there. There's 28 billion rows right there. Um, as you can see, 1.3 terabytes compressed, and it happens to just be cluster, clustered by those two keys. Okay, so we're using a four extra large, as you can see here, and it'll take about five and a half minutes, uh, so, and it'll generate about 6,900 files, and the ingest time is pretty much about the same. So one of the lessons I learned from, from working on the script was that the unload time is about the same as the ingest time. Um, as you can see right there, and maybe ingestion might be slightly longer. No, actually over here in this test run, it actually was a little shorter. And as you can see, when you're running this script, and what I would likely say to the GitHub is to use the smallest table, which is the customer table that I used in my testing, and that has uh, a lot smaller row count, and that could be good for you to just test with a small virtual warehouse. Then when you wanna go to a mid-sized one, you wanna use the store returns table, and that has a little more data, and then you're gonna start seeing it at the extra large and extra two extra large size. And then when, you, when, you, when you're ready to supersize, or if you wanna stress test, or you don't have to stress test, because I've just done it, 
it's uh, the store sales table at 1.3 com automatically compress uh, terabytes. Okay, so as you can see, we kind of talked about this script is gonna how to copy into a location, copy into a table, size up to save time for unloading address or just alter warehouse to size up, and size back down when you're just doing regular selects on that data. And you can open the worksheet history to track performance, which is what we have here. All you have to do is you ever want to close it up. And then if you want to open history, you just open it back up. Okay, so let me go back to what we've just done. We've unloaded those 28 billion rows and it outputs into uh, 1.3 uh, 1 terabytes compressed. Let me kind of start off the second part of this and, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what we're actually doing here. Okay, so what we did was we just completed this record which unloaded the data into here. So let's take a quick look as to what is going on. It, it, it loaded those, it unloaded these 6,900 to uh, automatically compress using gzip compression. Those are about the 250 megabytes as files as you see right there. And if we look at our AWS S3, if we hit refresh, we will see those files um, right here and they're gonna be, as you can see, 250 megabytes compressed. And of course, some of the later files might have had a smaller file size as it was wrapping up, but it will load all these files uh, in parallel, okay? So now we can always pair into a file. So this is the files that we just loaded, unloaded, from our store sales table. Of course, we could always query here, but now we're actually querying it and using this kind of dollar notation, which you had the benefit of doing um, uh, against your data before even loading in, which is which is the benefit is you could you could see what you're gonna do before you load in. So now we've got our four extra large array running, that's fine. So now we wanna copy those files back into Snowflake, okay? And I'm gonna explain now, I'm gonna go back up to the top and we're gonna wanna see what I did to, to do the create the target table table. Okay. So as you can see right here, uh, while that's loading, that's gonna take about uh, five and a half minutes. We are going to talk about, well, our, our, our prerequisites, we're creating a stage right, right here and create a user database and warehouse. So that's out of scope for this uh, demo, but you can uh, easily do that on your own through various tutorials including creating that stage. Uh, I happen to have two videos, but feel free to use uh, other ways of doing that as well. And of course, the three benefits uh, of what you can receive with this functionality is you save your most precious resource time, which is generally your employee time, especially if you have like a very expensive data scientist or nobody really likes to wait, right? So in Snowflake, you can just size up to a uh, larger compute size, get your job done, and then size back down. And you could even script that. And let's say you had happen to have a nightly load, you could automatically size up to let's say a medium or a large to finish your load and then size back down or, or even auto suspend. And of course you could query that TPC DS data to learn different query patterns. Uh, let me just show you that here. If you click this down arrow, uh, you hit open tutorials, then you could always click this TPC DS data. And so you get the, about the, the 99 queries that we've written and so you could just run queries against this. So this is the same data that we're unloading. So you could get to see various query query patterns over there as well. And then of course, the one of the benefits of this is you could test various data loading configurations. So the use cases for the script as well is you could always stress test unloading and loading. And it's actually why I'm actually recording this demo because somebody asked me, hey, how can you show me, uh, let's say loading, uh, 1.3, one terabyte of data. Well, no problem, we will do that with this script. And also unloading as well, because in order to generate that data, you could always use other data, but I said, hey, why don't I also demonstrate unloading? So you're testing unloading and loading to different file formats, delimited or JSON or Parquet, there could be various use cases to unload data. And you wanna see the impact of uh, virtual warehouse size and different configurations on performance. Let's say you wanted to tweak some of those parameters. And of course, this is all open source at that script uh, that I mentioned over here. And if you wanted some more information, just look at these various references over here. All right, so we did about two and a half minutes. Uh, let me show you, uh, explain a little bit about what happened earlier. Uh, before this video, I just set the context right here. I'm creating a schema called TBCDS in my play DB. 
and of course you could use uh, whichever database uh, you you have and I just sized up to a four extra large of course if you're just learning this you might want to just use an extra small um, so that you could understand it more before you size up to a larger size and if you're just using the, the I recommend you use the customer table first in that case you even when you size up you're only going to size up to a small and that will complete in about one minute anyway just to understand what's going on over here and so what I did was I created a view called uh, source view and that's just the view on the store sales now I put a place over here that you could also use the customer table and that's actually what I'm gonna save this as I'm gonna save it with the defaults the the minimum default so like the customer table is gonna be here and it's only when you supersize to a store sales then you're gonna to want to do that but you might not even want to do that just to save credits you could use my credits well you're essentially using my credits via this video so that you don't have to do it because you're gonna see that it, that it works on Snowflake but for your cases you might just want to start small and if you wanted to test it on a bigger one store returns I've already done that one for mid size so just replace that uh, table name here and then the the benefit of having the view is that it's the source view is just um, referred to throughout and of course you could always see that data it'll be the exact same just a straight view and what I did was I removed uh, all the files previously so just be careful with this in, if in production because this will remove um, whatever is in this uh, this stage that you have this is the files that were generated those 250 megabyte compressed files um, over there and so just be careful with that make sure only authorized users and um, have access to that and that's generally your best practice as well and of course we drop the empty destination table and as you can see what we're doing now is we're just going to create an empty table that's what that limit zero is with the same structure as our source and smoke test that data and of course this is what we just did we just copied into uh, we did a ls to see what's in that data and we can always parent the file so right now this is running this should um, pretty much complete um, very soon and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, so just a sneak preview of what we're going to do we're going to alter down to uh, extra small to size down we're going to verify that data we're going to compare the row counts and then we're going to do a quick recap of that all right perfect so yes it just completed five minutes and uh, 27 seconds so as you can see the data is compressed automatically we loaded in uh, no errors are seen let's let's actually run some queries first well first we are four extra large and since we're done let's size down to a small of course you could always auto suspend if you were in production as well um, you know with your script or if it was a, a task you could also do that so as now we're just sized down to an extra small so we're not paying for that for extra large okay so now let's let's run some queries to ex explain what's going on here let's verify the target table as you can see this is the target table so I wrote the data um, into this this is the source view that is a view onto that snowflake sample data and this is the target table as you can see there's 28 uh, bil billion rows let me just refresh this right now to make sure okay where is my play DB go to the TPCDS schema and as you can see uh, perfect that's what I want to see this is the table that we just created as you could see it's a transient table that's a recommended best practice to create staging tables like this as transient you don't want them as permanent because then permanent has more time travel that you're paying for which is a bit unnecessary uh, and, uh, and fail safe so staging tables you generally use as transient okay so as you can see there's 28 billion rows it was created on 253 so just about uh, just about 10 15 minutes earlier and we just loaded 1.3 terabytes into into that data all right and as you can see the data looks looks fine right here it looks pretty much the same as before and of course if you want to count will match what we unloaded earlier so as you can see there's about that 28 billion rows um, you know it's pretty much the same row count between the source and the target all right so that can let's do a quick recap and then we'll, we'll conclude this uh, video demo so recap we showed how to copy into uh, a, a stage in this case uh, our s3 and we cop and then we uh, copy that data back into a different table uh, using massively parallel loading uh, or sizing up to a four extra large so we sized up to save time for unload and ingest and then back down to save credits as you can see right now we're just using an extra small 
and we open the where worksheet history to track performance actually we can suspend this warehouse right now because because we uh, we, we do, do not need any anymore so I'm just gonna hit the suspend button and yes it is suspended okay and and then so we sized up and we sized down or, or auto suspend and as you can see that green light is no longer on so we don't need to to pay for a warehouse right now because we're just talking open the warehouse to track performance as you can see you could always open the history over here and close it that gives you allows you to go into the history easily from the worksheet and the benefits are you save your most precious resource time the employee time um, whether it's a very expensive you know data scientist or a trader or portfolio manager or or you know your developers anybody is the human is generally the most expensive thing so you're saving the time because you can scale up and then scale back down as necessary you and you query the tpcds uh data to learn different query patterns and you're testing to to various load uh, data load various data loading configurations and the use cases for the script is uh stress testing unloading and loading if you want to hammer it away at, at you know different even possibly even more than 1.3 terabytes that could be a good use case um test unloading and loading to different file formats limit json and parquet and also see the impact of uh, virtual warehouse size and different configurations on performance as you can see we use the 4xl but what would be the impact of maybe using a 3xl or a 2xl uh, or you know if you have smaller data sets using you should probably start small and then you could scale up the size if you had a use case for that and of course this is all open sourced over here and various references should you want to learn more info about some of the commands that we use uh, that concludes our, our demonstration on how to run big data of um, unloads and loads of 1.3 terabytes compressed and on snowflake thank you very much